Okay, so Pi News episode 88, and we start off with some sad news. Endeavor OS no longer does an ARM-based version. I did a video a couple of months ago showing Endeavor OS, and it's Arch-based Linux with the option of installing loads of different desktop environments. It really was quite a nice package. I'll put a link to this, goodbye Endeavor OS ARM, if you want to read more about it. But there is good news. Uh, I am using Arch-based Linux, as you can see here. If I open a terminal and type NeoFetch, thanks to Tom Termchenbauer for telling me about this one. Manjaro ARM Linux. And as you can see, the kernel is 6.6.30, using the Pac-Man manager, which I always struggle with. Um, but a, a lot of people really like Arch-based Linux, but I'm so used to Debian that I always struggle a little bit with it. Although that said, I have installed the Snap Store and uh, I've installed Zenotic onto it. And it seems to be very nice. I might do a longer video on it. This has quite a nice uh, single player mode. And once I'd got the Snap Store on here, I was fine, but it just, I wanted to try and use the AUR Store, uh, which it says is very good to have very good because it's got a graphical user interface, but the guides I followed didn't seem to work for me. But as you can see, this is working nicely. Anyway, this is not about games. This is Pi News, so let's quit out of that. And I'm going to shut this down and use my version of KDE Plasma because it's logged into all my emails and everything else. So it's, it's going to be easier to do Pi News. So let's switch NVMEs. Makes it nice and easy with this case. So back on my version of KDE Plasma, if we go to the browser, this is the link that Tom Termchenbauer sent me for Manjaro. And as you can see, there's loads of different versions here. So you're looking for the big ones. So this is with the GNOME desktop environment. It does say Raspberry Pi 4, but uh, they do work on Raspberry Pi 5. Although I think the KDE Plasma one didn't work for me. I couldn't get it to properly boot, which is this one. Uh, but I thought I'd try Mate because I don't use that as a desktop environment very much. So Mate and Arch together is a combination which I don't show much of. Actually, it wasn't KDE Plasma, it was the Sway one that I tried uh, because I wasn't familiar with it, so I thought oh, I'll give that a try. Didn't launch for me. But you've got XFCE here, we've got Mate, we've got KDE Plasma, and we've got Gnome. Another one that Tom reminded me about was Lacquer 5, and uh, this is basically RetroArch, which you'll see has just appeared on iPhones, iPads, and Apple TV. Uh, but it's also available on the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, you get more systems on Raspberry Pi 5 because we get GameCube and Wii, whereas you don't on the Apple TV and the iPads and so on at the moment. And you see there's a few stories about it in here, which I'll link in the description. We've got an upgrade to Mesa 24.0.4, better stability, and you can see Raspberry Pi 5 is specifically mentioned here. We also got LibreLec 12, which is more about playing video and streaming videos over a network. As you can see here, it's based on the latest KODI. I won't say it out because for some reason YouTube really doesn't like it, uh, even though you can use it legitimately. I've tried older versions on the Pi 5 and uh, yeah, it did. It worked really well. So it's nice to see that's being updated. Had this email from Mark Load, found something for NVMEs you might like. So M.2 spacers that fit in the screw sockets on the Pi hat. So you can see here the black bit here basically. Rather than having a screw where you need a Phillips screwdriver to be able to replace your NVMe drive, you saw my plastic clip earlier on in the video, this has uh, just something that's easy to use with your fingers. I put the original M.2 screw in the top of the spacer so I wouldn't lose it. This makes it a lot easier to swap out NVMe's for testing or just in general if you have a hard time with those itty bitty screws. And uh, here's the package with the sizes and everything. And there's an Amazon link, which I'll put in the description. Although this link is for 150 pieces. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's a nice, simple idea and very handy. Although I do really like my 3D printed clip. And I've started to show everything since the last Pi News, just so I don't forget something. So this is Pi News 87. So we had a faster native Chrome browser on Windows on ARM. So if you're using Windows 11 with a Raspberry Pi, then there was a big performance boost. Got much better performance on Windows 11 on Raspberry Pi. I showed the Maker Disk NVMe drive, which is pre-installed with Raspberry Pi OS, so super easy to set up. But we also had, just after that, the EEPROM update, which meant that you could basically use a network-connected Raspberry Pi to write its own operating system. Very clever. We also had proper Vulkan GPU support baked into Raspberry Pi OS. 
Ubuntu 24.04 on Raspberry Pi 5. I tested the 4 gig and the 8 gig Pi 5 and had some interesting results with benchmarks. We got the official remote desktop from Raspberry Pi. Uh, so this works with Wayland. It's not great with touchscreen, but it's brilliant with a mouse and keyboard and it's completely free. And this is good news because VNC, the free version, looks like it's going away. Had another NVMe board, I don't know what I've got, about five or six now, uh, for Raspberry Pi 5. And this one was a really good one and it's the one you saw just now when I showed a close-up of the clip. And I ended up fitting it on the outside of my case. Okay, so next up, we had a Raspberry Pi NAS from Instructables.com. So if you're looking at doing this, you can see they've put a two and a half inch SSD drive in there and a Raspberry Pi, looks like a Pi 4, is it? Yeah, because the USBs are on the outside. So if you're interested in building a NAS out of a Pi, I just thought it was interesting to put it in here because I'm sure a lot of people will plan to do that. And all the information on what you need and everything is in the story. Pi Dock from Tom's Hardware. Pi Dock provides Raspberry Pi 400 with a laptop style housing and a 1080 display. From Vilros, brings everything apart from the battery. And you can see the way it drops in. It's quite a nice design. It does retail at 239, which is always a tricky one when you can get probably Pentium Gold laptops for that sort of price. But it's really nice to see it housing a Pi. And obviously if it's for the educational side uh, and they want to get more into programming and things, and there's a few more pictures in the story. I'll link it in the description. All the GPIO pins are still accessible. And here's another one. I won't play the video. Uh, laptop computer using Raspberry Pi 400 and an 11.9 inch touchscreen LCD. I'm not sure what you'd quite use this for, but I thought it was something a bit different. Next up from XDA, who've been doing a lot more on Raspberry Pi, which is really nice to see. Uh, someone recreated Knight Rider's kit with a Raspberry Pi. I need to pop this on the front of my car. So if you don't know, uh, Knight Rider kit was a basically an intelligent car, uh, and this was the interface, and you can see that it's been replicated. Uh, I'll play a little tiny bit to see if the voice is there. So I won't play any more of that, but uh, it definitely is the right voice. And it's using ChatGPT as well. And we can see a Raspberry Pi Zero there, probably a Zero 2W, I would think. We had a robot Etch-a-Sketch. As you can see, another pie with a little breadboard here. It takes about two minutes to finish the drawing. It's really impressive. From Hackaday, we had the next evolution of Raspberry Pi recovery kit. And this is a serious piece of kit. Look at the connectivity on it. J. Dosher's recovery kit. There's some nice close-ups here. It's based around the Raspberry Pi 5. Uh, it's using a bootable NVMe drive. And a bit of software here, so FEXMU which if we scroll down, and this is thanks to Karinga Producos, that's probably the wrong pronunciation. FEX allows you to run x86 and x86-64 binaries on Arch64 hosts, so Raspberry Pi. Similar to QEM user and Box86, it has native support for a rootfs overlay, so you don't need to ch root, as well as some thunk libs, so it can forward things like gl to the host. FEX presents a Linux 5.0 interface to the guest, and supports only Arch64 as a host. FEX is very much work in progress, so expect things to change. And there's a guide of how you can install it into Ubuntu. So I'll definitely have to have a look at that. If you don't know, uh, x86 and x86-64 are PC architectures, so not ARM-based, so not like your phone or Raspberry Pi or the new Macs. This is the processors that have been around a long time in PCs, uh, and x86 is 32-bit, and this is a 64-bit version as well. From Tom's Hardware, we had some Raspberry Pi powered glasses translate sign language into speech. And you can see the camera in the middle here. There is also a video, again, I won't play the video, but let's just skip through it a bit. We can see from the video that someone is holding up their fingers in sign language and it's interpreting that. And it's reading out the letters. Using AI to monitor a live video feed, the AI system has been trained to recognize hand gestures and their associated letters. When a letter has been confirmed, the Pi uses text-to-speech to say the letter aloud. And it's a Raspberry Pi 02 w with a camera module V3. Really nice. And we had a new Compute Module 4 variant. You can see here, the Compute Module 4S. So we've got 2GB, 4GB and 8GB options. 
and these fit into the older boards. We designed it for industrial customers who are migrating from Compute Module 3 or Compute Module 3 Plus and are looking to retain the same form factor so they can basically upgrade their system with a faster processor. We will keep the Compute Module 4S in production until at least January 2034. Our industrial customers have been using these boards in everything from electric vehicle charging stations to self-pour beer taps, medical monitoring devices, and there was another story, CNX covered it as well, so I'll link both stories with a bit about the specs and everything. I really like this one. Uh, so open source Braille embosser. So Braille is uh, the way that blind people can read. So I've got a blind uncle and he's had, uh, when he's been to stay, he's had newspapers and uh, the newspapers are basically bumps and dots uh, and that's how you read it. But uh, it's actually quite difficult to write Braille. Uh, I've got a little kit where I do Christmas cards and birthday cards, but this is automated and super impressive. Jeff Geerling had the four-way NVMe RAID on a Raspberry Pi 5. You can see here, and there's a video on YouTube on this as well. Oh, I've got some glitching here. Uh, and also Hackstar.io covered it as well. Subtronic's latest NVMe board connects a whopping four drives to a single Raspberry Pi 5. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.